We're at the NVIDIA Showcase here at CES 2026, and while they don't have any new video cards to show off, there's still a lot of new tech that is going to matter if you do have an NVIDIA card, including updates to DLSS and frame gen, and new G-Sync Pulsar monitors. So let's check it out for ourselves. So one of the things that stood out to us was a G-Sync Pulsar, which is a new way to improve motion clarity in the monitor. And to talk about it in more detail, I have Kelly here from NVIDIA. So can you give us a brief overview of what G-Sync Pulsar is? Of course. G-Sync Pulsar is VRR variable refresh rate and ULMB combined together um, with the monitor being broken up into 10 different dynamic strobing areas to kind of help enhance that motion clarity and smoothness. Okay, and G-Sync Pulsar is built into the monitor. There's nothing you need hardware side, like on my PC, I just need a monitor that has G-Sync Pulsar. And so, um, can you tell us about like the technology that's built into the monitor and how that differs between like traditional G-Sync monitors? Sure, of course. So, G-Sync itself is the refresh rate matching to your GPU frame output. And then Pulsar just takes that a step further with the monitor being broken up into 10 different sections of dynamic strobing. So prior before, it would just be the whole monitor strobing itself and you kind of get that delay from the top pixel transition to the bottom, which could cause like strange artifacts or distortions. However, being broken up into those 10 sections that are able to, again, dynamically strobe, you get a much faster transition time and way easier for the pixels. So similarly to how if you have um, like an object that's backlit and you move it back and forth, your eye tends to perceive that double image or that blur around it. However, with Pulsar, it's kind of more of a stagnant image, which is easier for your brain to process. So it creates a clearer picture. Yeah. And one of the things on my mind was what is the floor for frame rate and refresh rate to actually get the benefits of Pulsar? Like, what's uh, what kind of FPS should I be targeting if I want to notice the improvement in clarity? Because I know that some folks out there might be, uh, you know, running 120 hertz monitors or even like 75 hertz monitors, um, or they might be targeting like their. Some folks might only be able to output 75 frames per second or 120 frames per second. I know that we're working with a much higher FPS here with this demo, but uh, how would you explain um, to someone who uh, is, you know, doesn't have a 5090 and can't output the maximum frame rate and how Pulsar would um, affect their experience? Yeah, so Pulsar is only really reliant on a minimum FPS limit, and by default through the monitors that is set to 90, but it is uh, changeable to user's preference. So the bottom limit is 75 and top is 120. And the nice thing about these demos is they're actually not running above like a super, un or they're not running an unrealistic FPS limit. Like we're about 120, 130 on these and you're able to see Pulsar in full effect. Yeah, so to explain a little bit more in practical terms, we have a demo of Anno 117. And one of the things I noticed most was uh, when you are scrolling between uh, through the map and I'm focusing on the arrows themselves. So I'll, to really notice Pulsar, you have to really stare at a static object and then move the screen. And it was very easy for me to notice the difference between Pulsar and not Pulsar, uh, even though we are uh, running a high FPS, high refresh rate with G-Sync. The difference is pretty stark, and um, so with this, I we were scrolling through horizontally through the screen, and it was really hard to focus on an arrow without Pulsar, but with Pulsar, it almost feels like it's running in 3D in a way because it's so smooth and it stands out so much more from the, or stands with the rest of the image. So I think that's one of the ways folks will probably notice it most and how it will affect, you know, your game if you are playing with a G-Sync Pulsar monitor. And even when I played with Overwatch, you know, looking at an object and swiping a lot more, I think it's going to affect those who really care about performance in esports settings. Um, and if, you know, I play Valorant and play Counter-Strike too, so I play at high, um, high FPS, high refresh rate. So I think it might be a little easier to track objects, track enemies, uh, whatever the case might be. Uh, but. Yeah, it's one of the more uh, practical things that I've seen uh, here at CES. So is there anything you want to add uh, about Pulsar and when you're thinking about releasing monitors with, with, with... So is there anything else you want to add with Pulsar and when we can expect monitors with this technology in it? So monitors are actually being released today on the 7th. We are releasing with four partners, AOC, MSI, Acer, and ASUS. AOC is going to be the starting price point at $599 and then all the other partners at 649.
for something that's a little more practical and so long as you have an NVIDIA RTX video card, the improvement to DLSS with 4.5 is kind of a big deal, actually. Uh, as someone who uses DLSS all the time when I'm playing at 4K, the image quality is a lot better with 4.5, and DLSS Super Resolution looks much, much better with 4.5 jumping from DLSS 4. And it's most noticeable in the finer details when you look up close to objects and how they're aliased. We saw a demo of Black Myth Wukong, and not only is the image quality and the anti-aliasing better, but it also gives more detail in the image itself. And you can notice this with how lighting reflects off of different objects in the game and how you can see through into the environment. Uh, there's like this wood panel in the corner in the Black Myth Wukong demo, and you could see the outside light coming through a lot more clear. And that's not even changing the shadows or lighting quality or any of the settings. The two side by side were using the same exact settings, but DLSS 4, and 4.5 and the difference is very noticeable so you don't need anything new that just comes with the updates that you get with your drivers and with games that are using dlss 4.5 but along with that is dynamic multi-frame generation so FrameGen has been out for a while and it's come with somewhat mixed results, I would say. And it's not necessarily something I would rely on to improve my FPS. But with Dynamic FrameGen, the hardware itself is able to recognize how much frame generation you actually need to hit a target FPS. So for example, we saw Outer Worlds 2 with DLSS 4.5 using Dynamic FrameGen targeting 240 FPS. And with the readout on top, we could see how many frames it's generating depending on the scene. So for example, if you're hitting 240 frames per second and the scene isn't that demanding, it's not gonna generate as many frames. But as soon as you swing around and look at a busier scene that's gonna be more demanding on your video card, it will automatically start generating more and more frames. But with my hands-on demo, it wasn't necessarily the most demanding stuff, so I would love to see this working in a more practical scenario. So dynamic multi-frame generation isn't available quite yet, but it is due out in the spring, and it is exclusive to RTX 50 series cards, so you kind of got to shell the dough for it in that sense. So the update with DLSS 4.5 and Super Resolution is available today, and it's changing the way the model actually looks at the scene. So not only are you able to get more detail, but it also looks behind UI elements, so you get the full scene that is being calculated into the model. So you're gonna get a lot more accurate image quality with this updated DLSS. Not only is dynamic frame gen available, but 6x frame gen is also available. And while I'm not sure how it's going to affect my game in practical terms, at least you know you're gonna have that later on down the line if you do need that extra boost for your frame rate. So that's a little bit of everything new with NVIDIA. And for everything else at CES 2026, stick with IGN.